Good morning, everybody. My name is Carla, and you've reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy, and a little bit of life thrown in. So today is Sunday, August 13th. It is my floss tube number 202. Um, it is two days before my birthday. Um, happy birthday to me. I am going to be <laughs> 58. Oh my God, I cannot even believe that it sounds sounds so old to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I am going to be 58 on Tuesday. Um, so I don't know if I'm looking forward to it or dreading it. Probably neither at this point. Um, I guess I have to think uh, each year older is one year closer to retirement age, <laughs> which is a good thing, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I want to say welcome. If this is your first time finding my channel, then I hope that you like what you see. Want to hit like and subscribe and all that good stuff and come back and comment. Um, and if you are one of my returning viewers, um, thank you so much for coming and sharing this time with me. Um, it means so much to me that you do that. Excuse me, my nose seems to be uh, doing that floss tube. Thing. It either runs or itches, right? As soon as you get on camera. Um, I also have a super thanks button down below. Um, this is a way you can give a monetary tip. Um, always awkward to mention it, to be honest, but if I don't ask, then you guys won't remember that it's there. And um, money has been very tight for me lately. And um, any little bit helps. It will help with defraying the costs of shipping um, out. Uh, give away things for my channel and um, paying for the zoom calls because I do have a zoom account um, so that I can do a monthly zoom meeting with you guys speaking of which there is one this afternoon um, hopefully this video will upload quickly enough so that if you're seeing this it can be a reminder the zoom call is gonna be at 3 o'clock Pacific time today Sunday the 13th um, but I don't know if you will see this video before that. Uh, last week it was great. My video was uploaded very early. And, um, but the, la the two weeks prior to that, it took all day to upload my video. So it's always kind of crapshoot with uh, YouTube. Um, so anyway, uh, if you see this and can join, then please do. All the information is in the uh, description box below on how to get in as far as the codes and stuff. So our weather here in Southern California has been kind of odd this week. Um, it has been a little bit cooler, so I'm not complaining about that. It's been kind of high 80s instead of high mid 90s, although it's going to go back up again, I think on Tuesday. <laughs> um, Tuesday or Wednesday, I think it's supposed to go back up to 95, but then it's going to come back to like be 88, 89. Um, but the humidity is so high um, that it's not a lot of relief. I think the humidity right now is like in the high 80s, uh, 80 per 87% or something. It actually has rained a little bit, um, but you know, kind of that, that dribbly, like it's not a relief type rain. It's just kind of that dribbly, sweaty, <laughs> you know, it's like, in fact, I'm sitting here, I have my window open um, and my, my glasses are fogging up because it is hot and muggy, even though it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's not a relief. I mean, the weather has been cooler. I'm not complaining about that, um, at all, but it's, it's really muggy. Um, okay. So Friday was World Cross Stitch Day and I, didn't even realize it was World Cross this day till yesterday because I slept through World Cross this day. Um, I had a weird week. I had a lot of energy last weekend. I was very proud of myself. I got all this stuff done on Saturday. I think I told you guys, um, like tour stuff, and I was just very proud of myself. And I felt like I am recovered from being sick in July. Um, I had COVID for those of you that are new. <laughs> um, and it wasn't that bad of a case, but the, the fatigue lasted like several weeks. And um, I felt like, Ooh, I have my energy back and everything. And then the rest of the week, I just, I was so tired and I was like, what the heck is going on? Um, I was like sleepy tired and, um, 
I think I was just coming down with just a little something because Thursday night I got home, I spiked the fever. Um, and definitely I had a full on fever on the aches and stuff like that. I took some medicine, I went to sleep, I called in sick for work the next day and I slept until like past noon. And then I woke up and I felt pretty fine. Um, so yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what little bug got me, but something did. Um, but I think that my fever flushed it out and I feel pretty, pretty good now. Although I'm going to, you know, I'm just not going to push myself. I'm at an age. Did. Um, you know, it's like I pay, I'm trying to pay attention to my body and I'm trying to pay attention, you know, balance paying attention to your body with not giving into, you know, the blues or anything like that. And I'm trying to distinguish, like, do I really not feel, or am I just sad or whatever? Um, but I'm trying to pay attention that if I don't feel well, or if I feel tired, I'm just not going to push myself because, you know, who do I have to impress, you know, cleaning my apartment, et cetera, et cetera. It's just me that's here. Um, and I like it better when it's clean, definitely. Um, but I'm not going to kill myself to get it there. It's a slow, slow and steady is what I'm trying to do. So if I'm not feeling that great, um, and I feel like what I need to do is rest and take it easy, I'm going to rest and take it easy. Obviously I'm still going to work, which is a good thing because I realized like from having to be home for 10 days when I was sick, that although I was sleeping a lot and they needed the recovery time, um, being out in the world just this tiny little bit, although sometimes I really hate being at my job, just like everybody does. It's not the job, it's just the idea of having a job. Um, it's good for me to get out and talk to people for those hours and not just be talking to my cat. Um, although he does answer, you know. Um, but anyway, so... I slept through World Cross this day on Friday, um, but pretty much feel better now. Um, I will say that when I was not feeling well, um, I did a little bit of uh, purchasing, which I've been so trying to avoid doing. Um, I didn't go crazy as far as spending money, but you'll see the stuff that I got. Um, I figure my birthday's coming up, right? So I can spend a few dollars to give myself a little birthday treat. Um, and that's what I did, <laughs> even though I've been trying really hard to like not spend any money. I'm trying to get the bills down. Um, okay. Oh, I did my first, uh, I posted my first extra, uh, floss tube extra counter, counter cooking, Carla being crafting the kitchen, um, series. It's, hopefully it will be a series, but I did the first one and posted it Wednesday and I did get actually a really good response from you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Um, and uh, it was just a very simple, I wouldn't even call it a recipe, just a simple method of frosting grapes, frosted grapes. Um, and a lot of people were like, this sounds awesome. I'm going to try it. So let me know if you tried it and um, what you think, because I'm obsessed with them. My friend actually uh, texted me yesterday, the day before, she was buying grapes anyway, so she got some jello to try it. She's like, oh my God, it's really good. And I'm like, I told you. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think because in this hot weather, um, it's been just such a treat for me. And I feel like, um, you know, buy, even though grapes are not cheap, buying a big package of grapes and a couple boxes of jello is about the same cost as buying, you know, novelty popsicles, etc., and so much more, so much better for me, right? So much like I'm eating fruit. Um, so yeah, I did learn that I much prefer the green grapes over the red grapes. So now I have to finish my red grapes before I can buy more green grapes. Um, I mean, it's not a hardship because it's not like I dislike the red ones, but I just like the green ones a lot better. Okay, I keep looking at my notes. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it as far as like all of my preamble. It's time to get to projects. Um, now, I do have to tell you this week, um, it's been kind of weird. Aside from like feeling a little bit off this week and so my stitching was maybe a little sporadic. Um, I told you last week that I was a klutz and fell out of my office chair. Um, I think that was last week that I told you that. Anyway. I didn't think I hurt myself and I don't really think that I really hurt myself. But what I think I did is I think I landed on my hand and like, you know, pushed my hand back because this whole week my hand has been hurting, not 
hurting, just a little bit of achy, like right in here. Like it's kind of my wrist, but it's my hand. And, and when I had a uh, sort of issues in the past, I've had issues in my thumb area and, um, you know, wore kind of like a brace for a week or so and it got better. Um, it's the same kind of thing, but it's not, it's not here. It's here, but it makes holding things sometimes uncomfortable. So I've had to kind of, I don't know, baby it. Um, so that's a thing. So I, you know, it, it made my stitching along with not feeling great, a little bit sporadic and my crocheting, but I did actually do a little bit of crochet this week because I was like, I have to get back into this. I was so excited about it. Um, I didn't want to do any Emmy groomy because I feel it's a lot more intense, you know? Um, so I just worked on my granny square shrug a little bit. Um, so I don't know if you'll be able to see even, I think I did one or two more rows around. And again, um, I mentioned this before when I watch this, my videos back on my TV, when I see them on my phone as I'm recording, they look fine. When I've watched them back on my TV, sometimes some of the colors come out a little bit weird with a weird cast. And I've noticed when I hold this up, the center section, um, has a very kind of yellowy cast and it almost seems like it doesn't go with the rest of the colors. Like, like it sticks out. Um, it is very pale, like celery color, um, in true life. And so if it's coming out with a very yellowy, almost neon-y kind of, um, not great color that isn't true um so it does actually flow very nicely the color and then as i am want to do i got a bug in my ear and uh decided to make another project which i thought would be fun kind of to make a bunch of them um, but I made a scrunchie. So basically it's just crocheting over a, you know, a hair tie. Um, and I did it with this cotton, cotton, which isn't the greatest thing for your hands, but I had it. Um, this is Premier Home Cotton um, Lavender Stripe is the color I used. And I just made a scrunchie. And it's basically you just chain uh, 10. And then um, hook it together and then, you know, put it around a hair elastic uh, and then basically just, I did a half double crochet and you just keep going in a spiral until you get it enough. In fact, I probably could have gone a little bit more to make it a little bit more um, uh, roughly, but... I made a hair scrunchie, which I wear a hair scrunchie every night. I wear my hair up in a messy bun every single night, um, especially in the summer, but usually all year round. So I have a couple like velvet ones, but now I have a cotton handmade one and um, I got some hair ties on Amazon so that I can just make a ton of these and um, I have to find out from Reagan uh, what her colors are with her new chair gym and her new teams, and maybe I'll make a couple for her and send them. Because I know she wears her hairs up in scrunchies a lot for practice and stuff. So anyway, so that was my big crochet project this week is I made a scrunchie, but I think it's really cute. And as I said, I will definitely use it. And it's cotton, so actually it's probably would be a good thing to wear like when I'm putting my hair up wet because it'll absorb the water and help it dry overnight, which my hair doesn't dry overnight if I have it up in a bun. I'm up in a thing. In fact, I put it in a bun this morning because uh, I took a shower kind of late last night and it was wet um, this morning. So, okay, so that was my crocheting this week. So on to the stitching. I have an FFO, but... There's a story here too. So this is what I was doing, my pad by Mill Hill. This is my purse project and I got it in my head I wanted to get this thing finished, which of course means I need to put something else in my purse, but I'm not super worried about that. But I finished it and I put it onto this glass candle lid and do you notice a problem? 
That's right. I forgot its face. So there's all these black back stitches uh, to create all the expression in the face. And I was so like in a rush to get this done, right? Because it was, it was making me nuts. This problem project was making me nuts. I was having trouble with the floss. Like every time I was stitching, I was like, my floss was nodding. It was just driving me cra crazy. And then when I went to go do the, um, the beading, I dropped beads everywhere like three times. And so I was just like mentally done with it. I wanted to get it done. And I completely just spaced on doing that last thing. And I didn't realize it until after I glued it. Like I finished gluing it and I went down to sit down and I was like cleaning up and I picked this up and I looked at it and I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. So no mouth, no, you know, eyeliner, no nose. <laughs> so I don't know what to do now. I mean, I can't get, I can't take it off without ruining it. So I'm thinking I could maybe glue some lip floss down. That seems like it might be a big pain. Um, I was thinking about maybe a Sharpie, but then I'm, a, I'm afraid if I use a Sharpie or something like that, that I'm just going to ruin it. <laughs> so I don't know. Would you leave it or would you try and do something? You know, it's going to go up on the shelf. It's not like it's the end of the world or anything, but I can't believe I, I, I put all that time into it and then I forgot the face. I forgot the face. Only that small little thing called the face. Okay, but that was my FFL. Uh, then I do have a few whips from this past week. A few being four. So... I worked on Mini Flower Kitty, Jeremiah Kentner, and this is Heaven and Earth Designs. I'm stitching this on 28 count, 2 over 1 tenth stitch. And I got about that much of a diagonal done. Now this is a mini, which tends to mean that it's like confetti, 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 like really, really intense confetti. So it does take longer um, to stitch, but I think it's nine pages and I'm in page two over here and I'm still on page one. No, I think I'm in page four. So, you know. I don't know what percentage that is. I don't use Pattern Keeper. I just use marking off on the chart. I heard crunching. Baggy's at his food dish. So I am, I really enjoyed this one a lot. And several of you did say that you're interested in me doing kind of a follow-up um, full coverage video. So that is in the works, meaning I'm brewing on it and just have to sit down and do it. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, I worked on my lion head, which is from this book, which is Donna Cooler's 555 Fabulous Crest Stitch Patterns. I got this on eBay. I'm sure you can find it on eBay. I got it for like very inexpensive, like two or three dollars. I'm doing this lion head as part of my August my August tradition. I always uh, work on a black cat birthday style, and then I work on a lion of some kind. Oh, that's how far I got. I'm doing this obviously on perforated paper, uh, gold perforated paper, and I'm using Sulky. 
um since it's 14 count and silky is supposed to be everyone says it's like like a one and a half threads of um dmc or any other cotton um i figured if i doubled it then it would be like three threads which mill hill often calls for three threads on 14 count so i figured it would work It's hard to find stuff in here because I have all of the projects, all four. to Cole who I finished. Cole is right there. So I finished this corner. Well except for the beading. And did a little bit more here. Last but not least, I worked on Zinnia, who is my next Norcorp Witch and Pixie. She's going to go up there with her sisters. Hello, baggy pants. You look in my leg. This is Zinnia. So I'm doing her, but without the, um, the arch because of the fabric that I put her on. This is like the full picture of the fabric. And got a little bit more on her, her leg and her skirt. So normally I would start like in the middle or at the top, but it was just because of the placement of this. I wanted it specifically, you know, in a specific place. So it was easier to start at the feet and work up to make sure she got placed correctly. So I think this is going to look really good though. And I did do, I showed you this last week, but I did do the owl that was stolen from another project or another pattern. Um, Minerva, I believe is the one that I took that from because when I do Minerva, her fabric is not going to allow for the tree and the owl that's behind her. So I figured I'd use the owl somewhere else because he's cute. Okay. So that was all my projects this week. Um, like I said, I'm not, not a ton of stitching because my hand was hurting and I didn't feel well for a couple of days and all that kind of stuff, but still it was okay. But I still have some stuff to show you. Um, a couple things I want to show you. Um, so those of you that have been watching my channel for any length of time know that my mom passed away from COVID and complications uh, thereof and, you know, uh, and, um, in January of 2021. Um, you know, it was very hard for me, not that that's surprising, anybody losing their parent, it's difficult. And there's so many here in the foster community that have had that happen to them in the last several years and I, I truly empathize. And anyway, so uh, my mom didn't have very much stuff. I mean, right when she died, she was living in a nursing home. She had her bed and her little area. And although her area was decorated to, you know, way more, you know, because she lived there. And so we went to the effort to like hang stuff on all her walls that was, you know, whatever was allowed. And they were very lenient as far as that goes. 
um, and she had stuff and she was a crafter and she did beading and uh, like pony beads she made like necklaces and uh, keychains for everybody in the world and then I got her into cross stitch so she was doing stitching um, she didn't have a lot of stuff so when she died you know we got back a box of stuff that was hers now some of it actually some of her stuff was missing which uh, is annoying she had two uh, needlepoint or cruel embroidery pictures that she did I'm mean, huge that she'd done years and years and years ago and I only got one back one one who knows where it is it was uh, the ten tribes of Israel or the nine tribes nine tribes of Israel anyway uh, it was gorgeous and it's gone so hopefully whoever took it uh, actually took it and is in enjoying it and it's not sitting somewhere in a basement or didn't get thrown away or something horrible like that but anyway uh, so we got a box back um, Aaron and Stacy and I went through it after uh, we had her little memorial. They took a few things. I took some stuff. Um, I had it in a box in my in the back of my car. Um, and I took some stuff in at the time, but seriously, that box has been sitting there for two years, two and a half years, um, with stuff in it. And I just haven't looked at it. I didn't want to. Um, for some reason this week, I got in my head, go look in that box and pull stuff out. So I actually took most of the stuff out of it. Um, it was a lot of stitching stuff. So I have it back to show you. Um, it's like supplies. It's not necessarily stuff that she did or was working on. Um, and then there's just like one thing left in the box, which is her wedding album. And it was kind of too heavy to carry upstairs when I was carrying this stuff. So anyway, so the first thing is this, which is, this is the project that started it all. I made this for her. Um, actually, I bought her the kit and... Um, she did it at the time think that she would be able to do it like physically and she loved it so much she's like please please make it for me so I did um, so this is what started me stitching was making this thing for my mom this plastic canvas tote um, and then she used it to hold all of her stitching and stuff so um, you know she had it with her all the time it looks a little worse for the wear because you know she used it she used it for Three or four years. Well, I gave it to her in 2019, so three years, yeah. Anyway, so I just thought I would go over with you the stuff that I kind of got back from her. I know all the stuff I gave to her originally. Um, I had these two pamphlets, uh, Catitudes and Elephant Book, because I put their patterns in here that she might want to use. I don't think she ever did. But now I have them back. Um, there's some fabric, and I dyed this for her. This is 11 count, so it's not something that I'm necessarily going to use right now. But who knows? You know, when I get older, I may not be able to see as good, and I'm sure I won't be able to see as good. And, you know, maybe I'll be into 11 account. So this is stuff that I dyed. And actually, that came out super pretty. Look at that. But she just wanted, at the time, a bunch of different colors to choose. So... I have some 11 count. Um, these are some kits I gave her that um, this one was probably would have been too difficult for her to do, but I thought maybe we could adapt it. But I might do it. It's pretty cute. Dogs think they're human, cats know they are. This is a little dimensions kit. And then she really liked the little Riolis, like the Happy Bee kits because. They're simple, and um, she did a couple of them. Um, but I we have a strawberry one, and then the puppy, and then a kitten. So I have those back. And 
just uh, supplies, you know, like uh, chip clips and seam up and stuff like that. She actually had uh, my, for my wedding, my invitation and all the stuff that I did. So the wedding, I have to say, my marriage, I, I'm not even gonna say my marriage was bad. My marriage was good until it ended, until he went through whatever he went through and left. Um, <laughs> my wedding was gorgeous and I did all of the invitation, you know, I did it by hand. Um, and I did a little booklet and, you know, so she kept all this stuff and I didn't have it. Whatever we had in our house got destroyed and, um, I'm glad I have it because I, 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 it was my work, you know, um, aside from the sentiment wedding part of it, it was work that I put in and, and I'm glad I have it. Um, and then this is just a bag of beads and um stuff that I gave her because she was working you know she's making necklaces and stuff with people and so I went through a lot of my supplies and I gave her a bunch of stuff and so I have it back and I did see these which I'm thinking um if you guys are familiar with my All Hallows Eve by um All Hallows Eve by Gundam Place. There are five stars on it, and you can stitch them or you can do buttons. But I'm gonna see if these are the right size because those would be kind of cool, and I have five of them. So when I pull that out, which will be probably next month, um, I'm gonna have these to check because I think that would be kind of cool. And then. It'll also have a reminder of my mom because originally those things were mine, but then I gave them to her, but she didn't have use for them at the time. And I am back now, and I don't know. I just think that that would be kind of cool to use those. And then she has a card that I sent her. This one made me tear up a bit. This is a card that I sent her for her birthday and Mother's Day uh, in 2020 during COVID. I hadn't seen her yet. Or I hadn't seen her for months at this point, and you know, um, this is one of these pop love pop cards, and um, you know, so my my card is all about how much I miss her and how we're gonna do fun stuff when COVID is over and all this stuff, and I never saw her again. And of course, my mom was very sentimental, so she kept all these kinds of things. And then she had a bunch of cards and stuff. Oh, look, here's a picture of me and my mom. Gosh, when was this? I want to say I was in probably my late 20s. And that was my mom lost a lot of weight. Um, she was a tiny little bird thing when she was in her older age, but. Um, But she has all these cards that she got to like make cards for people or send cards. So I have blank cards, which is kind of good for my, um, oh. and then she had my baby picture. That's me. <laughs> Do I look the same? I don't know. I have an attitude definitely in this picture. Um, but anyway, so then I have cards that I can use in my, in my journals. Ten forty three AM is when I was born. I was six pounds, 10 ounces and 19 inches long. Okay. So that was just a little fun thing. Well, it was fun for me. So I thought I would share. 
Um, okay, so what else did I have? I get this week. Um, I had a wonderful stitchy kindness sent to me from Ellen R from Florida. Thank you so much, Ellen. Um, she told me she was going to send me something that she saw and, you know, thought of me and, um, she sent me a sweet little card and, um, she sent two treaty things, one for Baggy, which she hasn't had yet. So I will give him some of these later today. I haven't shown him these because I didn't want him to get too excited. Um, they're called Wheelies, Crunchy and Smooth Swirled Treats. And it is chicken, chicken flavor. And he likes his treats. So those are for Baggy. Then she sent me a treat as well. She did not send me an empty package. There was a chocolate bar in here, which did not last because uh, I knew it was sitting there and I could not stand it. And I ate it finally. Not all in one sitting, but I ate it. Um, and then what she sent me is a Jardin Privé Cat Lovers which is honestly the only Quaker that I've ever seen that I've really been tempted to stitch. So I am really excited to get this. It was on my wish list, one, two, three stitch wish list. Um, because I always thought like, you know, when I get into a mood to stitch a Quaker or I need to stitch a Quaker or whatever, this is the one that I want to stitch. So I'm very excited to get that. Thank you so much, Ellen. Um, I have the Jardin Privé uh, cat, uh, Sampler of Shaw, which is like the only sampler that I was interested in. Um, so I'm not going to start this for sure until until that one's done, which maybe this year. Um, but yeah, I was excited about this. It's got eight colors. But I don't know, maybe I would use like variegated. It has a light pink, a dark pink, a light green, a dark green, a light blue, a dark blue, a light brown, a dark brown. Maybe, maybe I'd use like um, my uh, needle necessities or my thread works and do something along those lines. But who knows? But anyway, this is pretty cool. Or maybe, maybe this could be a contender for maybe my new year new start um, this year. I also got a lovely. Uh, postcard from Debbie Sisk. Um, she's so great and so creative. This woman does everything. And I mean, this postcard is hand stitched. It's like quilted. Well, I don't know if you call it quilting. I don't know. It's, um, I'm losing my words. Um, I want to say mosaic, but that's not the right word either. Um, anyway, it's, it's actually stitched. It's stitched onto the postcard and then she wrote me a little note and it's got like fun thread stickers and stuff. So thank you, Debbie. That was really, really sweet and really bright in my day. Okay. So now, um, on to the few gifties I got myself. So the big thing that I got, um, and these are to go with it chalkboard paint and chalkboard markers. So, okay. So I am surrounded by a huge mound of crap, but it's not crap. It's not bad crap. It's all of stitchy stuff. And, um, it's starting to drive me a little bit crazy, which happens every so often. I have two pieces of furniture here. Uh, I've showed you in previous videos. I have actually, it's like a jewelry armoire, um, with drawers. And then I have another little thing I bought that holds on my DMC. Um, but I'm feeling the need to organize and I feel like we have so many little, little bit things, um, doing cross stitch. And so I was like, well, what can I get? Um, and I was thinking like, Oh, an apothecary like take, but I looked online and I can't find anything that was under like hundreds of dollars, um, which I don't have. So that's been in the back of my head that I wanted something like that with a bunch of little drawers so that like I could have a drawer that had needles in it, like all my needles and a drawer or, you know, needles and pins and a drawer maybe with buttons and a drawer with 
magnets in the drawer, you know, whatever. Little things that could then, you know, so things could be organized and separated. Um, yeah, organized and separated. Um, and I was watching, I've been watching a lot of art YouTube this past couple weeks. I don't know why I just put on, I found a couple new people um, and I'll put it on and just let it run, you know, because they have years worth of videos and, you know, instead of going and picking each one, I just let it run. Um, and one of them, one of her things she does a lot is she goes into art stores and buys stuff and shows halls. So she was going specifically, I think, to a Michael's and she kept saying that they had this advent calendar that she was specifically looking for. And she was passing the thing. She was trying to find this one thing and she passed like a unfinished because you know how Michaels has a lot of unfinished wooden things like wooden boxes and stuff like that which I have several of and I've done some stuff with some of them and some of them I still have waiting to do things to um and I saw what is basically an advent box this was meant for it's for Christmas advent unfinished thing and I was like hey that looks like exactly what I have in my mind I wonder how much they are and I went online and I looked and I found one on Amazon that was like it was around 40 but I had like $20 um, in credit or something so I'm like you know what I'm gonna get it so I did so this is what I got it smells really good because it's that unfinished that that cut wood smell so this is what I got and what I'm planning on doing is because I'm not I'm not uh, ready to like do anything with it at this point um but as i said i got the chalkboard paint and then i got the marker so that i could actually write on each drawer and it'll come off what's in it um but i thought i'd do a video when i get ready to go ahead and put this together and um you know fill it organize whatever um i'm not ready to do that yet it's probably going to be well who knows maybe next three day weekend or something um but you know i got it it's not I'm not going to say it's like the best like quality ever. I mean, some of the drawers stick out a little bit funny or whatever. It's perfect though for what I had in mind. And you know, it's four inches deep. So it's deep enough that it will hold stuff, you know. Um, but I wanted little drawers like this because, you know, I wanted like I could put needles in there. So anyway, that's what I got. And I'm really happy with it. I think it's cute, first of all. Um, and I think it's going to work really well for what I have in mind. Um, but I, of course I need to, I need to paint it. I guess I don't have to paint it. It's actually pretty raw, but I want to paint it with chalkboard paint. And then, um, I have the chalkboard marker so that I can write on the drawers and, um, yeah. And then I can reorganize this drawer thing that I have over here because everything's kind of shoved in there. The drawers are bigger in there, um, but it, it's not like well organized. So anyway, um, I'll be able to use this for my cross stitch stuff, possibly some of the, um, of the golden book stuff that I do could be put in here. Um, so yeah. I'm really happy with it. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I never even thought to look at like unfinished, you know, um, the unfinished stuff. And it was way cheaper than, than anything else I could find. Okay, and then the last thing that I got for myself as a little birthday gift, and again, because I've been watching um, these art uh, artist YouTube channels, is I saw these books and I ordered, I actually ordered two because I ordered one and it was supposed to be delivered yesterday and I was so excited to get it. And then I got one of those, you know, notices like, oh, it's on its way, but running late, which is ridiculous because when you, it was supposed to be delivered the next day. And when you go online, if I ordered it again, it would be delivered the next day. But now they're saying it's going to be here maybe by Tuesday um, because the person forgot to take off the truck is basically what it is. So then you're just at their mercy, I think. Um, and then if they don't feel like giving it to you, then they'll cancel it and you have to reorder anyway. 
So I went back on and I ordered a second, not the same one. I ordered a different one from the same author. What it is, is reverse coloring book. Um, this is the one, this is the first one I ordered. So hopefully I'll get that one too. If, if it does get canceled, I will order, order it. So basically the idea of these, I don't know if you are familiar because I never heard of it before until I started watching these <laughs> videos. The idea of it is, is that you, that the colors are already there and you, the colors are already there and you just put in the lines. So it can be as simple or as complex as you want to make it. Like there's an example. Um, some of the pictures are more, um, let's say obvious like this. And some are more abstract. So you can doodle, you can, now I am not by any means an artist, a good artist. Um, like this one, like I see fish, I see goldfish. So that's probably what I would try and draw. Um, but I just, that, but I am like a doodler, like at work when I'm on the phone or whatever, I'm definitely a doodler. Um, so I thought it would be fun to kind of like doodle on these pages. So I'm really actually excited to, to work on this. And I got a set of um, black pens. Um, these are hand lettering pens, but they're like four, three different sizes of thickness of nib. And then there's a brush one. And then because when I ordered this, you had to have a minimum to get it like overnight. Um, I ordered some white um, gel ink pens, which you can use for highlight, and I got some felt tip pens. Um, so you could do the lines with color, they don't have to be black. But anyway, so that's what I got. Um, I'm actually really excited to kind of stretch my artistic uh, muscles. <laughs> if I do pages that I think look good, I will show them to you. If they look like crap, I might show them to you anyway because I'm not a uh, I'm not all that um, ashamed about it. It depends on, on what level of crop they look like. But yeah, I think I, I'm really, I think I'm gonna start with something that's, that's somewhat obvious, like something like this, and just kind of, you know, outline the flowers as I see them and, um, maybe embellish and then then move on to something that's a little bit more um, abstract so this one is supposedly divided by um, seasons and I was surprised they aren't that expensive like the uh, this one that I ordered was like ten dollars and this one was 11 I think um, and there's I think two more by her and then there's a bunch by other people so if it's something that you're interested in um there are on amazon i'm sure you can get them in bookstores you can probably get them on ebay um used you know where somebody did one page um but anyway i think it'll be fun to do that and, oh here's one that's very full so yeah so, what does it say? Re with reverse coloring, the possibilities are endless. Uh, each, let's see. Artist Kendra Norton inspires us with 50 dreamy abstract watercolors that evoke the visual flow of the year from the vibrant flashing colors of spring to winter's meditative blues and grace. Each is a guide for your own imagination. Trace the shapes, fill in with dots, find your your own figures in the clouds of color. Even mix up the seasons, snowflakes in summer and daisies in winter. There are no rules here except one, have fun and keep going. And it says allow the shapes and colors to inspire your creativity. So anyway, I am very excited to try that. Um, I'm excited to have a Zoom call today with my friends. Um, if I stitch and not work on this, then I will be stitching on my counted canvas piece. Um, I'll probably do both. I'll probably have both of them out there. Um, but yeah, I hope, uh, 
I hope that this loads really fast and you guys can see this video and be reminded to jump on the Zoom. Um, as I said, it starts at three and we'll be on at least for three hours. So I'm sure we'll be on till six my time, possibly seven. They usually go three or four hours. It depends on how, how tired everybody gets and how hungry I get because it'll be dinner time, etc. Um, but uh, until I see you again, I hope you have a great week. I hope you have lots of energy. I hope I have lots of energy. Um, I'm feeling pretty good now. So um, whatever was ailing me last week, I think I, I think I burnt it out with my fever, and um, and I'm feeling better. So um, I hope you guys have a great week. And until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye bye.